you like that cuttlefish in the opening sequence? To me, it looks like it was something almost from another world. Like, and in fact, when we talk about aliens, a lot of people make aliens look something like our cuttlefish. Now, cuttlefish obviously are not fish. They belong to a much larger group of organisms called the mollusk. And overall, there are like 80,000 to 100,000 species of mollusk worldwide. And they're an ancient lineage. I mean, they date all the way back to the Cambrian over 541 million years ago. And there are four major groups of these mollusks that we'll talk about. So what are the defining characters of mollusks? I mean, what in the world does a chambered nautilus and a sea slug have in common? Well, let's find out. First of all, they have a radula. This is a unique mouth part. It's kind of like a tongue that's got little teeth on it. So imagine having a teeth with tongue and it's keratinized. And they can use this radula mostly for scraping if you're a snail. And if you're a cephalopod, then your, your radula is into this more hardened beak that you can eat other things like fish and crustaceans with. So this is a defining character, but the bivalves have lost theirs over evolutionary time. And of course, the main thing is they all have a mantle. This is like the visceral mass. And think of viscera. I have a visceral feeling. And a visceral feeling is basically your gut feeling. So they've got this large visceral mass, this large cavity that has all their guts in it. And they can do gas exchange and respiration across that mantle. So let's talk about these groups of mollusks. I mean, there's 80,000 to 100,000 species. We're discovering new ones all the time. So I'm gonna talk about four major ones. We have the chitons, the gastropods, the cephalopods, and the bivalves. And 23% uh, of all named organisms are mollusks. So this is an incredibly diverse group of animals. Let's start with, with the chitons. If you go walking on a rocky beach anywhere in the world, whether you're on the west coast or in the tropics or up in Alaska, you might come across this little animal stuck to the rocks and it's got these plates. So it's also called polyplacophora, placa meaning plate, poly meaning mini. And this is a fairly primitive mollusk. Uh, there's about 940 species we, and we first see them back around 400 million years ago. So even though they retain a lot of like primitive characters, they're not the oldest mollusk we have. Now, one of the most commonly seen mollusks, of course, are snails. Snails are found on land, they're found on water, they're found in both freshwater and marine environments. They're also found right along the edge of the beach, all the way to the depths of the ocean. So gastropods are really found almost everywhere in the world. And they range in size from tiny little things like this big, oh, you can't see my hand. They're tiny little things this big to like enormous, weighing 10 pounds or so. And there's about 65 to 85,000 species of these gastropods. And uh, they're huge. Well, let's take a look at some of them. So a lot of them, uh, they have their shells and they're actually threatened by climate change because they make their shells out of calcium carbonate. So the oceans are slightly, are slightly alkaline. They have a pH of about eight, which allows these organisms to take calcium and carbonate and make their shell out of it. As the ocean becomes more and more acidic, it dissolves their shells. And their shells are beautiful and they follow these mathematical patterns like the golden mean and Fibonacci sequences for all you math buffs out there. You know, when we think of venomous animals, what's the first thing that comes to mind? A snake, right? That's what I think of when I think of venomous animals. However, it turns out that this cone snail is actually venomous, really venomous. They have a modified harpoon that they can shoot at their prey with to paralyze their prey. So these are active predators. Whoever thought of a snail as an active predator? Well, there you go. And be careful if you pick this guy up too, because he can offer a really powerful sting. And in fact, it is capable of killing some people. Now, some snails have lost their shells and these are called the nudibranchs. Nudie, of course, means nude. Naked, brank means gills. These are naked gills. And a lot of nudibranchs are incredibly beautiful and they're brightly colored. And what that is, is a warning coloration. It's called aposomatic warning coloration. It goes, look at me, look at me, look how brightly colored I am. Yeah, don't mess with me. I'll hurt you. I'm poisonous. So in the case of this blue dragon, this is a nudibranch that floats around on the top of the ocean and actively swims, unlike most other snails. Here's what's really cool about it. 
It Hunts Down by Celia Fasalis, otherwise known as the Portuguese Man of War. Yes, this small slug actually hunts down and eats Portuguese Man of War. But it gets even more cool from here. Not only does it eat it, it takes the stingers and the venom in that Portuguese Man of War and incorporates it into its own body. So whatever you do, if you pick this up, be very careful. Don't pick it up at all because it can offer a powerful sting and hurt you very badly. And also don't eat it either because it's got all those toxins, all those venoms in it as well. If you're like me, you've always learned plants are photosynthetic, animals are heterotrophic, which means we have to eat to get our food. Well, guess what? Here is a photosynthetic animal. Notice it's green. It's a sleeve slug. It's called Alicia chlorotica. It's photosynthetic. So it eats algae. It has chloroplast in it. Chloroplasts are green little organelles, tiny little organs inside of plant cells that do photosynthesis. When this animal eats green algae, it takes the chloroplast and incorporates the chloroplast into its tissues. That's wild. So here's a photosynthetic animal right here. Now it can't totally survive solely on photosynthesis, but it can go a long time in between feeding. Our next one and our third group are the bivalves. Valve means shell. So bi means two. So bivalves are things that have two shells. And if you're like me, you love walking along beaches and poking at dead things with sticks and collecting seashells. And this seashell uh, on the left is an Atlantic cockle, and on the right is a very small coquina. If you ever get a chance to see little shells, they, they wash up and then they bury right back down into the soil. Those are the coquinas. And if you walk along the Atlantic coast or the Florida beach, you will find these Atlantic cockles everywhere. Now, of course, these animals lack a head and they lack a radula. And there's about 9,200 species of bivalves worldwide. Here's what's interesting. Eyes in the animal kingdom have independently evolved multiple times. You and I have a vertebrate eye that evolved once. There are scallops that have eyes. These eyes evolved independently. So all those little blue dots lining the edge of that scallop, those are tiny little eyes that are capable of forming a full image. Pretty wild. And unlike most bivalves, this one can actually swim. I've been scalloped. I collected this one on the Gulf oh, a few years ago, brought it home alive, and made a little photo studio on my mom's kitchen table, right? And when I made it on my mom's fancy kitchen table, I had all the salt water and light set up and everything, and turned the whole living room into a photo studio so I could get this image. Thanks, mom. Some of us love to eat scallops, and we also like to eat oysters. Oysters form oyster beds, and in the towns where I grew up, a lot of them depend on oystering as a livelihood. Now, oysters are interesting. They build their colonies perpendicular to the prevailing currents because these are filter feeders. And this one is uh, from my home in North Florida. This is a very large oyster bed. Let's talk about cephalopods, head, foot. There are approximately 800 species and they date back to the Cambrian over 500 million years ago. Now, this is a chambered nautilus. And we say this animal is plesiomorphic. Plesiomorphic meaning is an old shape. It's got a pinhole eye, unlike ours. It's, it's like a very primitive version of ours. And it's got lots of tentacles. And it still has a shell. And it can put air in that shell to help maintain perfect buoyancy in the sea. More derived or advanced forms are octopus. Octopus don't live very long, only two to three years. And octopus and other cephalopods are amongst the most intelligent of all invertebrates. And they have a brain to body size ratio larger than any other invertebrate on the planet. And this is a little cuttlefish. And one of the interesting things about cuttlefish is that they can use colors to communicate. And in fact, I said earlier that science fiction writers often make their aliens look similar to cuttlefish or other cephalopods. So cephalopods are pretty wild. Not only do they include uh, the most intelligent of invertebrates, not only do they communicate through color changes, they also include the largest invertebrate on the planet, which is the giant squid. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this on mollusks and hope you get an appreciation for just how varied and how amazing mollusks truly are.